days leading up to 9-11. Yes. What was yeah. it? And it, a lot of people won't know this. Yeah. There, what was that scripture? It's a thing called the Parsha, and the Parsha is that on a Sabbath day, you know, the Jewish people open up the scrolls, and they have a scripture that's appointed from, you know, ages past for that day. Well, well, just before 9-11 came, now remember, there's more Jewish people in, in around here in New York yeah. than almost any other place in America, and uh, most places in the world. And so it's there. So they're all over New York. They're opening up the scrolls, and what's the scripture? The scripture is the scripture where God says, warns a nation that has known God, been blessed by God, and is now turned away from God. And he says, this is what's going to happen. It has a list of judgments that begin. And, and so, you know, some of them, I mean, of course, it's to Israel, but God applies these things. And some things are, are just that. But it says, an enemy shall come from far, far away land and shall attack you in your gate. By the way, this is the gate of America. Yeah. You know, you shall attack New you. York City New York is City the gate is the gate. Ellis Island. Yeah. I mean, this is the gate. This is the gate and that's where judgment begins. And so yeah. he says the enemy will come. He'll be brutal. He'll be, it, it talks about, it talks about in the middle of the day, there'll be a, the, it, oh, it says, it says there'll be a, a, a rain dust upon you. Remember this place was covered with a rain of dust. Of it says you'll be groping around like a blind person. It, 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 it literally says, and, and I'm not saying, you know, there's different applications, but God can apply. It says that below you, the ground will be iron. Above you, the sky will be copper or bronze. Well, literally, ground zero it was made up of steel or alloy of iron. And above them, there was this cloud that was made up of copper. You know, and, so, and then it, it, says, it says that, you know, it says this. It says that the enemy will come, like, sign of judgment in the Bible, like an eagle coming upon the land. You know, an eagle come, when, when judgment came to the ancient Israel, he, he uses the eagle as the image, eagle. Well, it says in that scripture, an eagle shall come, he'll come like, and the, the Hebrew says, which means a swooping eagle. He'll come down through every plane. The 9-11, they came from the sky like eagles. They came swooping down, and the, the, the plane that began it all, on the back of that plane was an image, and the image was of an eagle swooping down the same scripture that was appointed for that day and what the scripture is revealing is that's the beginning America that's the beginning of God's warning but it's not the end yeah you know talking about that parallel between ancient Israel and America I, I think of uh, the ninth of Av that that symbolic yeah. date obviously in the Jewish calendar yes. the temple was destroyed the first temple was destroyed yes and the second by the Babylonians the second temple by the Romans same day on the same day same day and so that that's what right. are the that, odds that's right and that and, and and listen and the Romans are not saying hey I'm gonna fulfill prophecy you know the Romans right. just and the terrorists are not saying we're gonna fulfill Isaiah 9 10 and we're gonna have all these things happen or that is even on the same day you know so so that same thing of judgment that's right Eric is happening with happen with America it's on the same day 9-11 Unbelievable. Hey, before we move on, uh, a lot of people ask, how does he come up with this? Where does Jonathan get these revelations? It's just amazing because you are unlocking mysteries and secrets that no one knows about. I, I guarantee most people watching, and we have a very educated uh, audience, most people, I know I didn't, did not know the Pentagon was, was founded on September 11th, that New York City was discovered, the island of Manhattan on September 11th, what are the odds? Uh, tell us about your process here in researching. I know you can't reveal too much, no, 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 but in okay. researching and uncovering this incredible information. Well, well, this all, Eric, this all began here. It began in New York in the southern, we're in the southern end. I was standing at ground zero. I saw a tree and something said, something said, you have to seek this out. There's a mystery here. I'm going to show you. And so it did. And that became the first puzzle piece of the next puzzle piece. So it just started coming. And then when I needed the next, and every book, most of the books have come like that. Um, and, and when I like okay okay here's the next one here's the next one. okay lord we, we and 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 then and then when i need like the next key someone will say something like the word will come or someone will say something or i'm typing on my computer um, and and something comes up that i wasn't looking for and it's the next thing so the, i could not i could not reproduce it or the somewhere often uh like same with the paradigm same with this this something I'm, I'm on my bed and something comes in my head and says look this 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 i said well that can't is that true and i get up my wife is still sleeping i get up go in the other room i go on my computer and i say i look at the web and i said my god that's true you know um so the lord i could not reproduce it just god it's just god I yeah. could not reproduce it. It's I mean, of course, I'll research once I get it, but I could not reproduce it. Yeah, it's the Spirit of God. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and it's a wonderful thing to see. And thank yeah. God that we have these revelations, Jonathan, now for these times we're living in. There's a famous version of Scripture called yes. the One Year Bible. Yes. Uh, a lot of people probably have the One Year Bible. Uh, what happens when yeah. you open it up to yeah. what we've been yeah. calling yes, the, the Harbinger, Harbinger verse, Isaiah 9 yeah. You know, Harbinger, yeah, for those who don't know, the One Year Bible has a, has a verse for every day of the year, you yes. know, or has a portion of Scripture. So if you, so if you open up 
you go to the harbinger, Isaiah 9, 10, which is talking about the, the judgment strike, enemy attack on the land, beginning of judgment for a nation. That verse, the bricks are falling. Open it up, look on the top of the page, and it will have a date. The date is September 11th. So the one-year <laughs> Bible literally joined together. Now, now listen, keep this in mind. So that means on the day of 9-11, all over America, believers were opening up their Bible before it happened and reading about the, uh, how to do with the strike on the land, about the sycamore tree falling before it happened. And in fact, the one-year Bible came out in the 1980s. So it was there for over 15 years, Eric, that every year on 9-11 across America, across the land, they're opening up the Bible on 9-11 to read about the, t the strike and the beginning of judgment appointed on 9-11. And for that to happen, I mean, for that to happen, you know, this, this is another amazing thing. For that to happen, you had to have Genesis was January 1st, you know, and then at the end you have the, the Old Testament, you have Malachi. So what it means, if you just take the Bible's algorithm, it's going to pinpoint that 9-11 for the day of attack. And it, with, with, I mean, who could put that together? But I'll, I'll, I'll throw you one more about, and this is part of the unreve unrevealed, but it's about now. But uh, the, the one more about that is that, not only that, not only were they doing that, but around this city, before the attack came, you know, there was a sound that was all over, that was the sound from the Bible, we talked about it in another program, of alarm. The, the watchman, alarm. watchman sounds it, and what does it mean when you hear that watchman sounding in the city? It means a, an attack, an enemy is coming, attacking the city. So all over New York City, the ancient alarm of the Bible was being sounded long before the Pentagon knew, the, the intelligence agency, all over it. Why? There's a particular uh, portion of the Hebrew year where in the morning, uh, the Jewish people are commanded to, or told to sound the shofar, and, and there's only a few days when they do that and also pronounce uh, words of judgment at the same time. So it's happening. One of those days was 9-11. So on 9-11, they're doing it. And the thing is, Eric, it had, it's a certain time when you had to do it. It's, af, it's, it's linked to dawn and sunrise. So listen, dawn and sunrise began around, say, 6.30 here in New York. So 9-11 so starts beginning. The terrorists are heading to the airport. But where does the sunrise, where does the sunrise begin? Where does the dawn begin? It begins in Maine. That's where the first terrorists began. As the sun was right. hitting and the shofar starts sounding, they're crossing into the security, heading to the gate of the airport. Then the sunrise moves to Boston. And so then the, ter then the, the shofar starts sounding the alarm in Boston. The terrorists go to Boston. Then the sunrise moves to New York City. So the, the, the trumpets are sounding in New York City and the terrorists go there. And then it moves to Washington, D.C. And the trumpets start sounding there. And the thing is, they go from, from, from 6.30 and then they go for about four hours. So it ends about 10. 30 a.m. Well, 9-11, the last event was the, the North Tower came crashing down. Um, it crashed down just about 10:29, and then the trumpets stopped sounding. Wow. And the word and the warning for now is but the trumpets were there, but nobody was listening. And God is sounding the trumpet. I believe even the Harbinger 2 is a trumpet, is a trumpet. That's what I believe I'm, I'm to do it for. I'm sounding the trumpet. Uh, but we haven't heeded it, but the trumpets are sounding and we have to take heed. Some people at home might say, well, that, that's pretty interesting, but why does it matter to me? What does the ancient mystery reveal? What would happen to America next? Why should everyone at home care about yeah. these incredible facts? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because it's affecting everybody. It's affecting your life right now. Yes. It's affecting, affecting us. You know. Yeah, the thing is that, well, one thing is that, if you remember in the Harbinger, one of the things that happened is the, on the day after 9-11, the, the leader of the Senate, Tom Daschle, actually mm -hmm. proclaims the verse of judgment of non, Isaiah 9-10, has no idea what it means. He says, this is the verse, you know, the bricks have fallen, and he has no idea. It's talking about the first sign of judgment on the line. And then, but then at the very last words of his speech, he says, this is what we will do. He says, we're going to do Isaiah 9-10. It was prophetic. It was prophetic. So, so we have done it. We have what's happened. What the, what the template is: the nation is given a space of time. It's given a window of time to come back to the Lord, and and either come back to the Lord, revival, or or go go away from the Lord, and you head to destruction. You head to calamity. You head to shakings and destruction. Those are the, the window. And so that we've been in this window now. And in that window, we have not come back to the Lord. We've grown much farther away from God. And that's why I've always been concerned about this period. And because of another mystery we'll get to with the timing, which actually goes, we're, uh, I've always been concerned about this time because the, the, in this mystery is the timing of where we are right now. This very year was pinpointed. So, so I believe that there's the signs that the window is in danger of closing. And so that's when the shaking start resuming. So that's why we have to take this very seriously. Yeah, tell us about 
the ninth of Tammuz. Yes. What is that about? That's that's one of the chapters yes. in the Harbinger yeah. too. Yeah. This is now. This is in the realm. Another realm of the book is what's happened since the Harbinger. That's still coming. Yeah. True. Well, you know, there's a, a a day in the Bible that's a day of judgment. It's called the ninth of Tammuz, and and that is on the ninth of Tammuz, the month of Tammuz. Uh, the walls of Jerusalem were breached by the Babylonians. So once that happened, the Bible records it. it once it happened, that's it. I mean, once they it was the defensive, protective walls are breached. It's over. It, the, the judgment didn't happen then, but it was the beginning. So, so they breach it. Okay. So it became a day of mourning and weeping, you know, for years, and it's still today a day of tragedy. Well, you know, a while, so what happened in between the time of the warning and where we are now? You know, since I wrote the Harbinger, well, we did a we crossed a major a major a crossing point, and that is that the Supreme Court uh, uh, struck down uh, marriage as we know it. It struck down the biblical definition of marriage. Uh, big, very big. Well, it was striking down a, a hedge. The day, it was June 26, 2015, but on the biblical calendar, it was the 9th of Tammuz. It was the day that the wall is removed, that the protective wall, the wall, the hedge that is protecting the civilization is removed. And that's what happened. From whom much is given, much is required. Yes. And America, America. has been blessed more than yes. any nation in the history of the world. That's Not right. an official covenant nation like Israel, but... This was a nation right. founded on godly That's principles. Right. It was founded after the pattern of Israel by yes. the Puritans. And, and you know, one of the things they, the people always realize is that John Winthrop, who, who spoke about the city on the hill, we shall be a city on the hill. And you talk about that in the book. Yeah, he said, we will be blessed more than any, and we are, we have been. But yes. they forget that he warned, forget he says, but if you turn away, the judgments that came on Israel are going to come upon you. Basically, I'm paraphrasing. And that's what the that's exactly what this is. All the, the judgments and the patterns of Israel are coming upon us. And Moses warned the people of Israel, and basically his last talk or his last speech yes. uh, to the Jewish people, he gave that same warning about what would happen to Israel that's right. if they turned away from the God of Israel. And Winthrop quoted basically quoted from Moses' speech to warn America, and that was the appointed word that that was leading the leading the days up to 9/11 was Moses' warning. Yeah. Hey, we're unlocking these ancient mysteries and bringing them alive now for such a time as this in these prophetic times in which we're living. One of them is the 19-year mystery. Okay, let me let me be, let, uh, let me do one thing before that. Okay, you know, okay, to, just to give an idea. Also, sure, sure. Uh, two things that happen up to that'll lead up to that. Lead up okay. to where we are. Um, one is one is remember the harbingers, Eric. Remember the tree, the they, judgment they, tree. Yes, the judgment yes. tree. Yes, I remember, didn't forget. Remember, remember that. Well, well, what happened is, is the it says the sycamore has been struck down. We will plant we will plant the cedar or the Erez tree in there. Well, yes. yeah, 11 a sycamore tree was struck down at 911 around here, and the people of New York do the exact thing that Isaiah said. They plant another tree in its place, have a ceremony, and it's, it's defiance, and they plant the same tree that the Hebrew denotes, which is the Erez tree. They plant it in its place, so they have no idea. It's a sign of judgment. And they say, hey, this, and this is a sign. We're coming back stronger. This, this was they called the Tree of Hope. It's like a symbol of America. Well, yeah. what happened to it? What happened to it? Uh, a biblical sign of judgment in the Bible is that, is that God says, I will cause the tree to wither. Well, the Tree of Hope at ground zero, that harbinger has been has been withering and withering away, and a sign of a nation that is right now. That well, tree well, is withering I'm, I'm going to go farther. Not than, far from where I'm, we're sitting. I'm right going to go now, farther than way. that. It's been withering away, and it's a sign of a nation that has been that has been, is withering inside. It's been withering, you know, spiritually, America. Um, and then it says, "I will cut off its branches." Well, you know what? Obama, the president, came down to ground zero, and he read a scripture on the anniversary, but he changed the word. And I'm not saying he knew what he was doing, but he changed the word. It says, "God will break the bow. He'll break the weapons and bring peace." He'll break the bow an hour. He'll break the bow. Obama changed it to he will break the bow. And the White House, when they put it in writing, they changed the scripture about breaking of the bow is a sign of judgment on the land, is a sign of national judging. You break, the, I will break the branch, I will break the bow. The bow will come. Well, across the street, he's saying this, is that tree, and they start breaking off the boughs of that tree. And then the final sign is the fall of the Eris tree, because, you know, that is, when it talks about the fall of the cedar, the great, that's talking about a big judgment coming. Fall of the sycamore, that's one. Fall of the cedar, that's strong. Well, yeah. well, what happened is the, the Eris tree at ground zero fell and was destroyed. And it was destroyed on a Hebrew holy day. It was destroyed on Passover. And on that night that it was destroyed, the moon turned blood red. All these signs of the Bible, and it's a sign of, of a nation that will fall. And if the sycamore was 9-11, the fall of the Eris tree is speaking of there's gonna be something greater that is yet coming. 
And I'll, I'll just throw in one more, and then we'll get to right where Please we are. Please do. Um, and that is that in the last days of Israel, and there's so much, we're just touching on it, you know, but the, the last days of Israel, uh, Ezekiel was taken into the temple and he says, look, I saw the image. I saw, it, was a, it was a false god. It was an idol. I saw the image and God said, okay, now judgment's coming. One of the signs is that images of gods appear in the land and then, you know, that's a sign of yeah. judgment. Well, America will never admit it follows other gods, but it does, you know, and you know, it's, we won't call them that. But could that, could a sign of a god appear? Well, in this city, where we are right now, in this city, the image appears, an image of a false god. It's so, it had to be the biggest uh, false god in the world. It's, the head was 300, over 300 feet high. Feet, feet on it. And where was it? They projected it, on, I'm looking at a, a, a version, they projected it onto the Empire State Building, symbol of America. The god was the god Kali, the god of darkness. So here they're using light to project to, for the god of darkness. This is woe to those who, a nation that sets light for darkness. Now, who did this and why did they it's do it? Because most people watching probably have no idea that no, this happened. No, and you can, go, you can go on the line and you can see it. Yeah, no, it's all crazy. People don't know why they're doing it. They did it for some reason, it had to do with a, a statement about endangered animals. For some reason, I, so they, the, they put an image of a pagan deity. Yeah, yes, yes, and so and she's there. The tongue is sticking out, dripping with blood. The, and 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 on that day, Eric, it was a Saturday night. Saturday, they it was a day they opened up the scrolls. It was a Sabbath. They opened up the scroll. What was the wow. appointed word? The appointed word for the day that America put up the image was "Do not make an image of a god, or judgment will come." And so all over New York City is this god looming, and, and it's the god of death and destruction over New York City. Wow. The gate has been breached. The towers have been knocked down. This is biblical, not All just the this. twin towers All on 9-11, but as, as you show in the Harbinger too, Jonathan, this happened in ancient Israel as well. It's replaying. It's uncanny. It's replaying. So it is literally replaying it's, now. It's replaying, and it takes us to where, this goes right to where we are now. And, and the thing is that when I look back, Eric, we, I, I alluded to it at the beginning, but I read, and anybody can do it, I read the, the chapter things to come, and I'm not saying I know, I'm just following what, what you yeah. know. And it says, it speaks about, okay, the pattern is that if the nation doesn't turn back with the first shaking, that greater shakings will come upon it. And, and you can actually read ancient, old commentaries on Isaiah 9, 10, and you're gonna see it, it's, it's like America. Greater shakings will come, and I looked at it, it says, how will they come? I said, well, it can take the form of, uh, of the division of the nation. America is divided. We as see that, that now as a, across every across level. Across the level, yeah. yeah. Uh, disorder, the di order breaks down. We're seeing that now. Uh, the breakdown of infrastructure, we're seeing it all over. The natural calamity, man-made calamity, it goes through this whole thing. And 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 the thing is, so it's- Pandemics? It's a, pa well, that's gonna be another, there's a whole yeah, chapter- Yeah, we will, we will talk about that. Whole chapter called The Plague, is. yeah. Um, and, so, and so all that's there. And the thing is that, but it's not only that, in that chapter, when I talk about like the next shaking coming, I, I use the word crown. Now, the word crown is the word corona. C corona wow. is crown. You know? And so here you have this happen. And then, but even the timing, because the question is asked in the original Harbinger, it's, it's revealed in the Harbinger too, but it, it says, how long is it between that first shaking and then when the, the bigger shaking start coming online or the destruction? You know? And it says, well, it's a, it gives the dates of the Southern Kingdom. And the Southern Kingdom is 605 Nebuchadnezzar shakes. It, yes. First invasion. Then when is it destroyed? 586. Comes back. You put it, you, yeah. You put it together and you have 19 years, a 19 year span. 9-11 happened on 2001. What is the 19th year? 2020 is the 19th year, the year of shaking. 19 year, it's the 19th year. It's the exact pattern, the year of shaking. So the shakings come on. And not only that, not, and that's why Eric, I, I, and I, for years I'm looking and say, Lord, and not that, you, I'm not gonna put God in a box. He can do whatever he, he wants, but are you gonna, is this gonna follow this pattern? Is 2020 gonna be the year? And it was, it is, it's not finished. But not only that, but Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah, he prophesied about what was gonna, the judgment was gonna happen on the 19th year, which it came. And he prophesied one of those judgments was gonna be, a disease, plague and pestilence will come upon the land in the 19th year. It's eerie. I'm not saying they did it, but these things just come together. What is, what is the name of this disease? Corona 19, COVID-19. It even has the, num years, even has the yes. number of judgment and the time span. Wow. And there's a whole mystery to this plague. You know, when I first wrote the Harbinger originally, I wrote it totally nonfiction, all that. And then the Lord said, rewrite the whole thing. He said, because yeah. the Lord spoke in parables to get more, so you can reach more people, be easier to read, easier to think. So I put a story of a man called the prophet, yeah. a man called Noriel, um, and he's revealing it to him. Well, they come back now. <laughs> you know, you know it's, it's, the prophet returns to Noriel. You know, that's why it's called the Harbinger 2, sometimes the return, which can mean a million things, including the return. This so the character, the prophet returns. Yes, the he book. returns, and, and Noriel, so then 
now he's taking him to all these places. And and by and, and by the way, while but but everything that's revealed is real. So so what? But you have a story on top. So while I'm writing this, uh, listen, I, I I'm writing it in January. I start writing in January, yeah. and then all these things start coming on America, coming on America, coming on America. But I knew as a Lord, Lord, was this third? So this is the reason I had this unction. You have to write it. You have to write it because there are things in there that have to be that we have to know. And you know, in this, and God's people have to be. They can't be unaware. We got to sound the trumpet, and we have to. So I had, and then everything started coming, in, which is affecting the book too. Because yes. like, oh Lord, wow. so you have to update the book, change some things, add it, some it, things. Because more was coming. I mean, the plague yeah, was coming, yeah. even though it was there. So, so it's it's just it, mind-boggling. But listen, God is a God of compassion. There is so much. What this is telling you, you know, sometimes people, when, I, when the harbinger came out, some people are really scared. Yeah, but listen, don't be scared. The point is, I mean, be scared if you're not in God's will. But then yeah. get in God's will. If you're not in God's will, be scared. Get in God's will, then don't be scared. But the point is, the the, the safest place you can be is to be in the will of God. Yeah. You know, you know, we say, you know, I want, how, do I, how do I be safe? Well, from the word safety in Hebrew is the word Yeshua. And Yeshua is Jesus. The safest place is to be in Him. If you're in Him, you don't have to fear, but just be in Him. In fact, this is a call to be in, in, in Him as never before. This is the time for which we were born. Yes. We were born for biblical times. These are now biblical times, everybody. These are even leading to the end times. You know, these are, yes. but they could lead to revival. This could be our greatest moment. You know, the apostles, they had a tough time too. The prophets had a tough time, but they were, they, they were light. So be a light. This will be your greatest moment. But fear not. How many times does God say, fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not? Why? Fear not all the time. Why? You're not on earth. I'm not on earth. You're not on earth to survive. You're not on earth to worry about your life. You're on earth to use your life for God's glory and purposes. You're not here to protect what you have. You're here to bless this world with what you have. You're on a mission. You're on assignment. You're not of the world, so you don't have to worry about that. You are here on assignment from heaven. You're here, so you can't bless the world if you get caught up in the world. You can't bless the world if you're, if you're all concerned about yourself. You're here to bless them. Be free of that. You say, well, what if they do this? What if they arrest me? What if they? Listen, Paul was arrested. It didn't stop him from ministering. It didn't, nothing can stop you in God if you don't stop. And so, listen, nobody's staying here forever. We're all passing through. So make the best of your time. Make the most of your time. Be free already. You're here to bless the world. You're here to minister to God. You're here to minister the gospel, to set free the captives in the darkness. You're here to shine your light. What are you worrying about? you got an assignment. That's all. You're giving. You know, the word in Greek for angel is angelos. Try it. In Hebrew, it's malach. Try it. And now, now that's what's used of the angels, but you know what? In the Bible, it's also used a few times of people like you and me. Because if, if you're a messenger of God, if you're on assignment from God, you are one of God's angels on earth. And the angels are not to worry about, about their, their selves. They're to do their job. All the more. God says, forget about the fears of people. Proclaim the gospel Forget about, don't live like the world lives, you're not of the world. Don't live your life worrying, losing sleep every day about these things. That's not why you're here. Get free from God. God says, fear not, fear not, fear not. I think he wants us to not fear. Amen. Preach it, do the will of God. Let the chips fall where they may. You focus on doing God's will and seeking him first. He'll take care of the rest. Look at all the callings that God gave his people and virtually every one of them you can see, wow, they had to go against their fears. Moses had to go against his fear to go to Egypt. David had to go against his fear to go to life. Elijah had to go against his fear to, to have a showdown with the prophets of Baal and Ahab and Jezebel. Jeremiah, his whole calling had to go against his fear. It's because God wants to get us to that point where we're free that we go against our fear. When you're free of fear, you're free of yourself. You don't have to live a limited life anymore. You're not limited by yourself. You're living an unlimited life because I'm not afraid. In the days ahead, you're going to need this. In the days ahead, you're going to need what this message is saying. The key. Because you're going to have the chance to use it because as it gets more challenging to stand for God, the name of Jesus, that's when you're going to have to stand for Him all the more. And the, you know, and the world says bow down to this evil. I mean, they don't have, they don't have the, the idols like, like this one, but it's the same thing. Bow down to this evil. Imbr celebrate this abomination. You have to say, no, I will not. And I will not fear. 
The Lord is my shepherd and my rock. I shall not fear. Whom shall I fear? If God is for you, who can be against you? Whom shall you fear? The world says, well, we're going to boycott you. We're going to have to make sure you're fired. We're going to counsel you. have to say, go ahead. My source is not you or this job. My source is God. When the world says, be silent, don't speak, you need to say, no, God commanded me to speak. And between you and God, I'm going with God. And I have nothing that matters that you can take away from me. I am free. I'm sold out. You cannot buy me because I'm sold out. Sold out, you can't buy me. You can't intimidate me. I'm free. Get to that point now before you get in the situation. Resolve. Make up your mind. You know, those believers who were persecuted, again, the, the ones who stood were those who, who got to this point and they became great. That's what God wants. But get to that point now before you have to use it. Before they ask you to bow down, resolve, I'm not bowing down. When they threaten you with your job and this and this and this, doesn't matter, I'm doing what God said. I'm going to trust God. Before the fiery furnace, before you go to Jerusalem like Paul, get to that point, that zero point, where you can stand and be free and fulfill your calling. God did not put you here in this life so you could spend your life worrying about your life. What is that? That's a circle. He sent you here to stop worrying and start living beyond yourself. Proclaiming, doing the will of God. And it says, and what does he says? Go, and he says, nothing shall separate you from the love of God. What shall? Sword? No. Tribulation? No. Famine? No. Principalities? No. All hell? No. Nothing shall separate you from the love of God. Told the parable linked to eternal life. Who wants to receive eternal life? We all want to have eternal life. We, if we're saved, we have eternal life. But he said, if so, therefore go and do likewise. Meaning this is the life you have to live. Go and do likewise. What does it mean? It means do as the Samaritan did. And as he said it, it's a command. That means it's a command of God. If he said go and do likewise, it's a command to do as the Samaritan did. It's not just a good thing, not just a nice thing. It's an absolute thing. That's the way we have to live. It doesn't only mean if you happen to see somebody lying on the road. Let me, <laughs> I can say this. It was a long time ago when I had a, when, when I was starting out with a bio, little Bible study we had and, and I remember this whole group of people came and I happened to be talking about the Good Samaritan. And they looked horrible. They could not look at me. They're all looking down. They're, they're not looking at me at all. They, they, and and they, they're the more I talk, the worse it becomes. So at the end I said, what was going on there? It's a whole group of people. What's going on? They said, um, you know, you spoke about you know, stopping and helping the one on the road. Said, when we came here, there was somebody on the road, stuck on the road, and we said, we can't do it because we have to get to the Bible study. <laughs> so they had to get to the Bible study. They had to skip the guy on the road to get to the Bible study to tell them to not skip the guy on the road. <laughs> because so often we get everything mixed up. This is ministry and we're not doing the compassion of God. Hey, but it doesn't mean if you just happen to see, if now you do happen to see somebody on the road, that's the whole thing. But it doesn't mean you're going to see somebody on the road every day. Most of the time you're not. But it means live your whole life with this spirit and this attitude. What does that mean? Number one, you are not, if you are a disciple of God, you are not to live your life a life of self-centeredness. If you're a follower of Messiah, if you're saved, you cannot live a life of selfishness uh, or primarily looking out, or looking out only for yourself. A life that doesn't care about others, that is not acceptable to Messiah. That's not acceptable for a disciple of Messiah. Number two, and you, by the way, you could do all those things in the name of God and still be selfish. You could do a million things in ministry for other reasons and still be selfish. Number two, your, the life you live must be a good life. Meaning you must be a good person. Not just, not just, not just primarily a successful person. That's all great. Not just a, a million things of a person. But you must be a, actually a good person. The life you live, you know, people say, hey, I'm living the good life. No, the good life is a life of goodness, not of money. Not of, it's a life of goodness. It has something to do with the quality of goodness. Now, it's not the same note. It is not the same as the quality of niceness. You might be a nice person and you might be a rotten person in your heart. 
In other words, why? Because you can be nice for a million reasons. You can be nice to get ahead. You can be nice to keep the peace. You can be nice because they'll like me. You can be nice because it's just a safe way to be. That has nothing to do with goodness. A good life, you know, he didn't say, say, he's not called a nice shepherd. He's called the good shepherd. And it's not the nice Samaritan. It's the good Samaritan. You know, the priest might have been nice and the Levite might have been nice, but they weren't good. But good's a whole other thing. Your life is to be a vessel of goodness, active, proactive goodness. It can't be negative. In other words, it can't be a life that's hurting people. Not, 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 not that you can, you can hurt their feelings if you're lo in love sometimes, but, but a life that's not causing harm to people, not, not beating people down, not using people, not abusing people, not manipulating people, not neglecting people. But it also can't be just neutral. You say, well, I don't hurt people. No, neutral's not okay. It's not the neutral Samaritan. He wasn't neutral. The others actually were neutral. And they were bad, but they were neutral. They didn't hurt the guy. The robbers hurt the guy. They didn't do a thing. They were neutral. Neutral is not okay. You cannot be a light and be neutral. A light is not neutral. The darkness is not neutral, and the light's not neutral. But neutral is not enough. You're not, I'm not hurting anybody. I'm minding my own business. That's not enough. That's not enough for God. I'm minding me, my own business. You know, so much evil comes in the world because of people who mind their own business. In Nazi Germany, most of the people weren't Nazis originally. They were minding their own business. They didn't want to make waves. And so evil came on the nation, which could not have happened if they, if they didn't do that. A disciple of Messiah. If somebody's hurting and you can help them and you don't, you're not living as a disciple, a child of God. Your life has to be a light that overcomes darkness and brings blessing and brings healing. The effect, what is the effect of your life? It has to be good things, life, healing, blessing people. Not about your whole life trying to get blessed by people and try to get blessed by the world. That's not good. It, you know, it's not bad about being blessed, but if you're, that's your goal, it's about you. You are to bless people, bless the world.